to speak, pretend that I'm dreaming. I smell your breath, not listening, but I still hear you screaming. Going under. One step away till you hear what I'm saying. I have never got to the airport faster in my whole life. That was like 35 minutes from when I got on the highway to parked in the underground. Woo, crazy. Legitimately, life record achieved. <laughs> Let's go. The airport this morning is super empty. There's like legitimately nobody here. I haven't seen it this like slow in ages, which is awesome for me, because I already have my boarding pass, it's on my phone, taken care of, traveling within Canada, so it's like legitimately the easiest morning. Should be anyway, but you guys know how it goes. Anything could happen, I suppose, so I'm gonna put this away. I'll see you guys after security. All right, made it through security. That line was absolute bananas. However, right when I was going through, they opened up another section. I booked it under that little tape that I was that guy. Made it through in like no time. So I got lucky, stopped for coffee, stopped for something to eat, and then look who I ran into. Oh, what's up, Dennis? So we're actually headed to his place. Uh, more on that to come, but I need to smash this. He needs to smash that. And I just got paged to gate D22. I'll be right back. We're here, East Coast. First things first, look how small this airport is. It's so cute, it looks like a pool house. Look at this, it's like, my, it's like my backyard. I've never been in a smaller airport, this is so tiny. You can tell I'm in a small town too because no one here has seen a vlogger. Everybody is literally looking right now, it's hilarious. Okay, let's get to the car. I'm super hungry, I've got stuff to do. Who are we looking for? Hashtag that's Max. I'm trying to find Max. Where is he? Max is chilling at a coffee shop. He's probably hitting on somebody, I would say. <laughs> yeah, these are cute. Yeah. Max. Feels so good. <laughs> Ooh, it's Max. Get it, Max. You creep that guy out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Just banged up a window real long. <laughs> that <laughs> spills his coffee everywhere. <laughs> yeah, how far did you park the tour bus from here? How far? Pretty far, actually. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry if I scared you when I banged on the window. <laughs> so if you guys didn't know, we are here in Dennis's house. I want to see where you shoot all those beautiful food photos. As a photographer, I need to see the surface. I need to know where the magic happens. Sure. Take me. Uh, you're looking at... Right here. Okay, give me the give me the rundown. How does it work? Well, you, if you guys haven't seen his account's incredible, and where those photos are taken is super interesting to probably a lot of us photographers. So let's uh, let's break it down. So uh, I shoot food photography. The best first thing you want to do is walk all around your house. Your kitchen might be where you cook, but it's not necessarily where you should shoot. North facing windows are great, which is why I have this huge window right over here that I put in. That's like six feet long and these patio doors and then another window another little cool little trick is diffusing so if you like diffusers you can just Whoa. diffuse the whole window and that will help you out a ton diffused soft natural north facing light is what you need so where's the surface show me the surface so the surfaces are all in my basement oh. uh there's tons of them so and i use them. different ones depending upon the shot because i want the surface to match the color of the food so everything makes sense together it's all very thought out and methodical but this is a table that i will shoot on sometimes because it's super like rustic and has an awesome aesthetic yeah that's cool i want to see some of those surfaces after that's yeah, awesome we got, we got you Hi, Wembley. I love seeing how photographers like light and shoot like their daily content because like this guy's posting pretty much every day. So that's a lot of work. So it's interesting to see how each individual artist goes about delivering that content on a daily basis. So, and these are props. Yeah, this is super messy and full of props. 
and then my okay, so just like stuff that you like put into photos, like yeah, styling things. So like, food needs to look really good, but one of the biggest things you need is props, right? Props. A lot of times, you know, new forks, new plates, new knives, new new cups, new whatever. It just looks too sterile. It's too clean. It's too new. You want something with the, where the patina is kind of a little tarnished, but in a photograph that comes across so great because it doesn't have that shine. You know how sometimes when you edit in Lightroom, you're like, gosh, that's shiny. You bump the highlights down as low as they go and they're still super shiny. Yep. <laughs> Perfect way to avoid having to do that. Great tip. Older patina, older, can, and all you need to do, I literally, this specific fork came in a set. I got 40 of them for 75 cents at the antique store. Yep. I will say, coming from a place where I used to work, photographing a lot of products, what made those products super unique in the photos was going to the antique shops and finding unique things to place in and around the photos. And a lot of that stuff comes from those shops. So this is super cool. Like, look how badass these look. You're never yeah. gonna find an ice cream scoop that looks like this. This is like 100 that years look, old. That would look dope in and a photo. And it was $4. Have you put that in a photo? Yeah, yeah. We'll insert that photo here. Boop. Oh, actually, oh, the photo. You can do one better. You can. I don't even have to. You can save Hang me on. on the, oh, you can, can save I, me on the edit. Can I find it? Can I find it? Nice. Yeah. See, that looks so much better, and it matches those uh, pecans, pecans, pecans. I don't know. It depends on where you're from. Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't want to take a stance either way. <laughs> These are teacups. I use them as espresso cups. I do Insta stories a lot with coffee in the morning because, like Peter, as you guys know, he loves coffee. I share that love of coffee and good coffee. The best thing you can do, especially if you're a traveler, is go to local markets, antique stores, whatever. You find gems there that you would never imagine. These were four for like the equivalent. I found them in Beijing. They were the equivalent of like $2 Canadian. So that's like what? Uh, 75 like, cents American or something? Yeah, maybe. And they're like so cheap, but they're so awesome, incredibly well made. And if you're photographing, they look fantastic. Can you see? Yeah, they got that like old world feel, like you just found them like buried in the sand in like Egypt or something. You're like, oh, score, espresso glass. Yeah. Who would have thought I'd find it out here? Ha! Exactly. I'll take that home. Yeah. This is Wembleton. Wem Wem Wembles. Wembley? Wem? Wembleton? Wembleton Falls? Hello. Wembleton Square. Wembleton Square. We're about to make pizza. Margarita pizzas, spicy barbecue chicken pizzas. Wembles is gonna help us. A little Wembley here, a little Wembleton Falls. I'm trying to come up with as many names for Wembley as I can. And uh, Wembleton Falls is, is one of my favorites so far. She's just the greatest little Sheltie ever, and she's so cuddly and warm. Look, look how well behaved she is. She's just, she's just loving life. Why not, right? Pizza, New Brunswick, East Coast. Little Sheltie, little soft, warm, cuddly dog. It's great. Uh, here's the thing, though. I don't cook. I don't cook at all. Like I'm. I, I, I can microwave things. I can make a pretty decent grilled cheese. You guys know this about me. So expect some pretty heavy cooking montages. Most of it's gonna be me shooting Dennis, but he's got an extra apron, so I might jump in just, just for a little bit. We'll, we'll see. Okay, it is pizza time. We went to Sobeys, we got, Sobeys is the grocery store. We, uh, it's not like a dude's house or anything like that. I mean, I mean, I guess it could be, but anyway, I'm rambling. We got all the ingredients we need to make pizza. Dennis just cleaned the kitchen like mint. Legitimately, you could lick the countertop. We're not gonna do that, but you could, like if you wanted to, you, you totally could. Uh, so Max is setting up the biggest light I've ever seen. Hey Max, I think you brought a big enough light with you. <laughs> what is this, the Food Network? Look at the size of this light that Max brings in his, did you carry that on? No. Oh, I guess that would have been awesome. I <laughs> wish. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> you can't, where did you go? <laughs> there you are. What's up? Up? <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time to make pizza. I'm super excited because I love pizza. So I don't, I don't cook very much. I, I can make like a decent grilled cheese. Um, I can make a sandwich. Frozen pizza, I'm pretty good at putting in the oven and, and monitoring until it's time to come out of the oven. I'm, I'm decent at that. 
and decent legitimately because I have burned that before. So I'm pumped to maybe contribute a little bit today uh, and to watch Dennis in his element because I've been a fan for a long time. So to, to watch him cook and be able to shoot it with macro lenses and lights, huge lights, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be super fun. So I'm very, very excited. I'm gonna stop talking because the sooner I stop, the sooner we all get to watch pizza being made. This is the hour, the darkest place. Dante's in front of the devil's maze. It's a good world. Beats Domino's, I'll tell you that much. Woo! Mmm! It's pretty hot. It's actually Pizza. very hot. Yeah. I guess it did just come out of the oven, right? <laughs> yes, a 550 degree oven no, we'll to it. ensure on the best <laughs> quality pizza. It's too much pizza, wasn't it? It's the best amount of pizza. <laughs> All right, so we're done. We had more planned for the day, but we had like seven pizzas. More like five, whatever. It was a lot of pizza, and we're pretty much just KO'd for the night. So I think we're just gonna like binge watch Ozark for like the next five hours and and call it a day. So thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't already. I have like no energy for this, but I love you guys, and I will see you in the next episode. Sure.